hi guys well that cough video certainly got a very interesting response it was a video i posted on my youtube page about the kinds of determinations you can make if a patient coughs during the clinical swallowing evaluation also known as the clinical bedside evaluation or the bedside evaluation or the csc it's essentially an evaluation that speech pathologists conduct without imaging. On one hand, some clinicians were saying, thank God you're finally posting something on this because people need to understand that they can't make these kinds of decisions without imaging. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who are saying, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but this is all I have. All I have is a clinical bedside and I rely heavily on the cough to know whether or not I should make a diet recommendation or not. So what am I supposed to do? Nothing? I mean, I, look, both sides are making valid points. They're really bringing up essentially what's going on in their reality and the extent to which we should all be considering it. So I thought I'd do a follow-up. Maybe there will be multiple follow-ups depending on what the response is to this one. In some ways, you can kind of think about these two different views as the haves and the have-nots. So the people with imaging are often like, hello, get with the program, and the people without imaging are the people who are like, I'd like to get with the program, can I get a program please? Good Lord. In the first video, a lot of people who don't have imaging were saying things like, I mean, you're saying that I can tell nothing based on a cough? I didn't say nothing. What I said is that you can tell that they definitely coughed. If you think that's nothing, that's because you think that the cough indicates more than it actually does. So let me describe why I say that. Let me put it this way. Many would agree that one reason for conducting a clinical swallowing evaluation is to assess for signs and symptoms of aspiration, which can be indicated by a cough. If we just consider aspiration as it relates to a cough, then there's probably four primary outcomes that we can consider when we're doing a clinical swallowing evaluation in terms of how they may or may not relate to each other and the impact of further imaging. So let's go through this exercise. One potential scenario is that the patient coughs and they're actually aspirating. We could call this a true positive. Another potential scenario is that the patient coughs but they're not aspirating. We could call this a false positive. So the reverse is probably obvious. The third scenario is the person didn't cough and they're not aspirating. We would call that a true negative. And finally, another outcome could be that the person doesn't cough and they are aspirating. That's what we would call a false negative. But the primary message is that without imaging to confirm the meaning of the presence of a cough, we only have the cough. You're blinded to what the cough actually means. But for those clinicians who have both clinical swallowing evaluations that they can conduct and imaging on the same person, again, to whom much is given, much is required. One thing we have to remember is the aspiration that's seen on imaging, maybe later on in the day or days after the clinical swallowing evaluation happened, does not confirm that when they coughed during the clinical evaluation that there was definitely aspiration or there wasn't, or that when they didn't cough that there was definitely aspiration or there wasn't. We have to remember that the clinical swallowing evaluation and imaging happen at two separate times, which is why it's really, really important for people who actually do the imaging to indicate whether or not the person coughed on imaging. What we want to do is we want to take our clinical swallowing evaluations and we want to know whether or not the indicators that they give us in those evaluations are actually backed up reliably or unreliably with imaging. In other words, if you have a patient who coughs at the bedside with thins and then you follow up with imaging and they cough every time with thins, you should definitely document that this is a person who tends to be reliable at coughing with thins and importantly you can use that as an indicator more reliably at the bedside or in whatever clinical setting you're in when there's not imaging. We want to use our imaging wisely so we can project out for moments when we don't have imaging to determine what behaviors are reliable, 
what behaviors aren't reliable. Importantly, if you have a patient who coughs unreliably on imaging, you can't have therapy goals where coughing is the outcome measure of anything because you just saw on imaging that they were unreliably coughing. So what does that outcome, what does that behavior really mean? Another thing to consider is that there are patients who cough during the clinical swallowing evaluation that never aspirate on imaging. First thing is you didn't fail. Okay, your clinical acumen isn't on the line. The whole point in imaging is that you can't know at the bedside or in the clinical evaluation whether or not the bolus went here, there, or anywhere. Okay, so you didn't fail, but importantly, it's your job to really challenge this patient to see if whether or not the moment that we can actually see what's happening, they do aspirate. Don't just give them one bolus and say, well, they didn't aspirate, therefore, because the point of the imaging is not just to confirm aspiration. Our job is to understand physiology. So we wanna use that time wisely to determine whether or not the presence or absence of a cough in the clinical setting is backed up by physiology or bolus flow, aberrant or not, when you do have a chance to actually see what's going on inside the oral cavity and the pharynx and the larynx. So what's another thing to remember? Coughing isn't always bad. If you do a clinical swallowing evaluation and the person coughs, the assumption is that that's an indication that they're aspirating, which we generally don't prefer for our patients to do. It is also important to know that if indeed that person who coughs during a clinical swallowing evaluation also then follows up and aspirates on that same bolus type during imaging, we want to say, well, at least this person coughs. That's a good thing. Let's give them the benefit of saying, good for you, you cough. Your body did the appropriate protective behavior in this scenario. But we also want to then see if the cough is effective. If that cough is effective, then that's a double plus in their category. Not only did they respond, giving us an indication of sensory response to that bolus that went into the airway, we also know whether or not their cough is actually productive. Does this cough work? If somebody's cough works, it's probably better than changing the bolus type to a thicker liquid or having them do a postural adjustment like a chin tuck. We want to give them the opportunity to experience what it's like to swallow thin liquids, as well as practice becoming more efficient at coughing it out. If you take this experience away from them and give them thickened liquids, which we all know they often don't comply with, or postural adjustments, you're then basically taking away an opportunity for someone's body to learn what to do with this challenging situation. As I say these words, I hear all of the squeamish, very risk averse individuals going, but what about this? And what about that? Yeah, certainly. There are circumstances where you might not want to let a patient practice on thin liquids. This person's just got some new lungs. We certainly don't want that to be the case where whatever they're swallowing is going into their new lungs if they've just had a transplant. But not many of us are dealing with those patients. We're often dealing with patients who have the capacity to expel a bolus. Think again about PTs who have patients who are fall risks, who also get a chance to practice walking with the right type of safety options. In this case, it's not a guardrail, it's not a crutch, it's not a walker. In our case, it is the actual physiology of the cough and everything that it's meant to do. And we should be saying, good for you, your body did what it should.